vegan, winning without bloodshed. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Hares and rabbits count on the numerous veins in their furless ears to dissipate heat and regulate their body temperature. Snowshoe hares have comparatively smaller ears as heat travels shorter distances through their body and keeps them warmer in the colder climates they reside in. Continue watching to find out more. Greetings, cherished viewers. I'm Old Abner, a learned snowshoe hare, and this is my adorable niece who just popped in for a visit. Meet little Elma, a witty mountain cottontail rabbit. Yes, we are both vegan. I reside in the boreal forest of spectacular Canada. The animals and people of welcoming Canada wish that God's divine light pour everlasting blessings upon you for all your caring deeds. Welcome to our show entitled Hares and Rabbits, The Moon's Sacred Companions, Part 1 of 2. Hey loving viewers, I'm really excited to be sharing information about ourselves and our mystical connection with the beautiful moon. Dear Uncle Abner, may I know how your family of hares got its name? Good question, little Elma. Our clan is known as the Snowshoe Hare because we have large and generously furred hind feet that help us to move easily over snow. These furry soles also protect us from freezing temperatures. These snowshoes are indeed the key to our survival in the boreal forests of North America. Whoa, these snowshoes seem to come with four-wheel driving power. I wish I could have a pair too. Indeed they do. Nature has thought of everything and equipped each species according to their geographical needs. Your clan settles in lower bushy areas near riverbanks and does not require the speed that we need to thrive in the high mountain ranges. The big snowshoes help us travel far at 43 kilometers per hour at times, change directions swiftly, and jump horizontal distances of up to 3 meters. Wow, that's comparable to ski racers. I noticed that hares and rabbits differ in their physical appearance. Hares look larger and also have longer hind legs. You observe well, sweetie. And I see that your ears are smaller than those of us rabbits. Why is that? Hares and rabbits count on the numerous veins in their furless ears to dissipate heat and regulate their body temperature. We snowshoe hares have comparatively smaller ears as heat travels shorter distances through our body and keeps us warmer in the colder climates we reside in. How interesting, Uncle Abner. I will tell you a secret about myself. My mom told me when I was born I was blind and hairless, like all baby rabbits. I was teased a bit because when my hair cousins were born, their eyes were open and they were covered with fluffy fur, ready to run, jump, and hop. Little Elma, every kitten, which is what we old folks call baby bunny rabbits, is beautiful, despite the particularities of their clans or species. Surely, you must have been the cutest bunny on the block. As a baby rabbit, your mother had to oversee your development during your first six to eight weeks. By then, your hair cousins had already fully grown in four weeks and were ready to explore the world on their own. Hmm, that's true. Can you tell us more about other differences between rabbits and our hair cousins, such as our behavior and lifestyle? Of course. In terms of habitat, you rabbits dig warrens, which are vast underground burrow systems sometimes as deep as three meters and with several entrances. On the contrary, we hares 
live above the ground and make our homes in hollow logs or in simple nests that we build out of grasses and other vegetation. Amazing! And what about our family traits and traditions? Well, for rabbits, it's all about family, isn't it? We hares are not as social as rabbits. Rabbits usually live in large colonies while hares tend to live solitary lives until breeding season. Wow, we are a romantic bunch. Ha ha ha, yes exactly. Both hares and rabbits have a high capacity for reproduction, so depending on latitude and local conditions, the breeding season could last from mid-March until August, and a female rabbit could deliver four litters a year of two to four babies each, or even up to a maximum of eight. Female snowshoe hares may also give birth four times a year to three to five leverets per litter. Our human friends didn't come up with the term breeding like rabbits for nothing, now did they? Lovely viewers, we will take a brief pause to hop around in search of fresh grass. We will be right back after this message. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Vegan, because we are humans, not vicious beasts. Welcome back to our program, Hares and Rabbits, The Moon's Sacred Companions, Part 1 of 2, on Supreme Master Television. Apart from the differences we discussed earlier, hares and rabbits actually have quite a lot in common. Firstly, we are both happy herbivores. In summer, we eat a variety of green grasses, flowers, and leaves. In winter, we feed on buds, twigs, tender bark, pine needles, and shrubs. Yeah, it's cool to be vegan, but you did not mention veggies. How come Bugs Bunny is chewing carrots all the time? Well, he's only a cartoon character. We do eat veggies, carrots included, but they are not our favorite food. In fact, given the choice, we would choose natural vegetation over carrots grown in a garden. I see. There is still more interesting information I must share with you, my dear little Elma. Do you know that hares and rabbits are sacred companions of the moon? Many cultures, nations, and people naturally associate us with the moon. You see, our courtship rituals signal the arrival of spring and the season of fertility, as our gestation period is approximately one month, thus closely matching the cycle of the moon. We are deeply thankful to the moon because our children are always born at night, hence they benefit from her blessings. Now I know why I love the moon so much. It's all because of her blessings since we were born. Uncle Amner, I have heard some legends about us and the moon. Are they all true? They are stories handed down through the ages. Although they are not necessarily true, there is some meaning behind them. In German folklore, hares are the sacred symbol of Estra, the moon goddess. From Estra comes the Christian celebration of Easter, since the festival's date is predetermined by the phases of the moon. In ancient times, the moon-gazing hare was also seen as auspicious, a source of abundance, new beginnings, and good fortune. Wow, that's so cool! We are indeed VIPs, as I didn't know that Easter linked us so deeply to the moon. Well, sweetie, there is even more. In East Asian mythology, the moon rabbit was entrusted by the moon goddess Chang'er to pound elixirs for her. The moon rabbit remains the symbol for the mid-autumn festival, an important event celebrated throughout Asia. These legends truly make me proud to be a bunny. You know, one of my favorite cartoon television series is the Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon. Now I know why Sailor Moon's name is Tsukino Usagi, Rabbit on the Moon. Ah, there you go. Besides, in cartoons and anime, hares and rabbits often appear in children's literature as personified animal characters portraying many positive characteristics. In Alice in Wonderland, the white rabbit ignites Alice's curiosity and spiritual awakening, 
leading her down the rabbit hole to search for the truth. And one of the most popular and enduring characters of fiction is Peter Rabbit, who loves outdoor play and bravely explores the natural world. Through these charming characters, we help humans, adults and children alike, to reflect on our sentience and virtues as animals. This understanding will lead to greater love, compassion and mutual respect for all sentient beings, eventually turning planet Earth into an Eden for all of us co-inhabitants. I have learned so much from you today, Uncle Abner. Thank you so much. I bet we can still learn a lot more too. Benevolent viewers, please join us again Friday, September 24th for part two of Hares and Rabbits, the moon's sacred companions. Loving viewers, it's been our pleasure to have you with us today for our program. May the high heavens bestow blessings upon you. Vegan, we are blessed with an abundance of fruit and vegetables. Why kill? Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash aw. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com baroblique schedule et suprememastertv.com baroblique aw. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule y suprememastertv.com barra inclinada aw. మా కార్యక్రమాలు అందజేస్తున్నాయి అనేక భాషలలో దయచేసి చూడండి సుప్రీం మాస్టర్ టీవీ చుక్కా కామ్ ఎదురు స్లాష్ స్కెడ్యూల్ మరియు సుప్రీం మాస్టర్ టీవీ చుక్కా కామ్ ఎదురు స్లాష్ ఏడబ్ల్యూ